Hi. My eyes are watering. Allergies, believe it or not. Hello. Come on in. Come on in. Don't worry about my itchy eyes. Just come on in. Don't let the pollen in with you, right? I hope you brought a beverage. I've got mine because today uh, is installment number one. My Timu Kitchen Part 1. I have my little clipboard here. I'm going to go down through the list. There are 49 items that I'm going to try to cover in this video. Oh, my goodness. If you've been here before, you know where you are. Welcome back. You're always welcome back. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Connie, and you've just entered Connie's little corner. And yes, as I indicated today, we're going to cover part one of what probably will be a three or four part series on all Timu items that I have in my kitchen. Just kitchen items. Things that I use in my kitchen, things that exist in my kitchen, things that I put in my kitchen. All oh, kitchen. <laughs> and I don't even have everything yet that I want to have. So that's kind of weird, right? I know. You'd think there'd be a limit, but depending on what I'm making or what I'm doing, I'm always seeing what I want more. So before we get into the list, if you are new here, please go down below. You will find my link. My link, when you click on that, you can download the Timu app. Two things will happen. You'll get a $100 coupon bundle to use on future purchases, and you'll get 30% off your very first order. To get that 30% off, use my code right up here, AFC95851. That code is what will get you 30% off at checkout. What will happen for me is that Timu will give me $5 on account, not cash. They'll give me their dime, so to speak, worth of $5 so that I can shop and bring you more products. When I accumulate a certain amount, I go shopping and presto, you get a sponsored order that I show you. If you're watching this on your TV set, you can scan this barcode right here and it'll do the same thing as if you were to click the link and or put in my code. Just scan that QR code and you're good to go. Okay, guys, for the novices, I'm going to say this. In this type of video, you're not going to see any prices above. All the links for any item that are still available and their prices will be down below in the description box. So I'm not going to be telling you prices. You're just going to be seeing pictures flash across the screen. Not so much my smiling face in this video, okay? I'm going to push you back a little bit. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, coming up first. Got to check my list. Look at this little fan. This fan is incredible. Now, yes, it's in my kitchen. And yes, I specifically got it for my kitchen for a couple of reasons. Number one, as you can see, it's adjustable. I can turn it either way, whatever direction, tilt it this way, tilt it that way. It also has multiple speeds. It is USB powered, not USB chargeable. So I do, I have found that I have to keep it plugged into the USB, um, to the block, all right, in order for it to work properly. It has four different speeds to it. It works great for circulating the air around the kitchen because part of my kitchen is basically dead air where the air conditioning and the heat just goes right by it and doesn't circulate. I use that for circulate. I also love that I can hang this on the wall and point it in any direction. It'll help move the steam uh, because I don't have a hood over my oven, so it will help move the steam and whatnot around. Keeps the air clean and fresh, and it's just great. I can move it. I can sit it anywhere. If I'm sitting at the island and mom and I are a little warm, I just change the direction so it blows on us. That fan is an amazing investment. You cannot go wrong. All right, next items, and there are six different items to this one item. These are the cabinet poles, the door poles that I got when I remodeled my kitchen. And yes, this is coming up in my Timu kitchen because they're in my kitchen. I grab those poles every single day when I'm opening drawers or opening cabinets. So what you're going to see in here is you're going to see two inch poles. And those are on my little cabinet over the microwave. Four inch poles. There's a set of those on my medium cabinet that's over my sink, six inch poles, which are on my larger cabinet over my coffee pot, 
five inch hulls, which are on my side cabinet on my garage exterior wall. And there's also the five inch are on the bank of drawers that are next to my stove. 10 inch poles, <laughs> which are on the, the large island. So the large single drawer on the island, the two cabinet doors underneath and the four drawers, bank of drawers under my coffee pot all have 10 inch poles. Every one of these poles is brushed nickel. If you go back and you look at the household hall where I got them months ago, probably six months ago, you will see where I did a comparison. All of these at the box stores versus Timu, identical item for item, Timu was a tenth of the price. Literally a tenth of the price. Those 10 inch, big 10 inch ones were over $10 at the box stores, a lot over $10. And I paid like $1.49 for each of them at Timu. Um, I also have the round knobs, the brushed nickel knobs that I got. And there's uh, three or four of those. I don't remember. But I got those at Timu for literally pennies compared to the box stores. And it's all excellent top quality items. So, yes, it's in my kitchen. Do I use it for cooking? No, but I use it to get to what I need to cook with. <laughs> So they're in my kitchen, right? Don't just think what you can cook with or bake with. You're redecorating. And as you all know, those of you that have been following me, I'm re I bought a fixer upper and I've been remodeling. I still haven't even gotten to the living room. As you can tell, it's not painted or anything. Um, but in the kitchen, I've been focusing a lot. And those door poles and door knobs, drawer knobs, were a big part of it. You'll also see the one black... Um, it's called a self-tapping knob. And I got that because I have a pull-out cutting board. And that's how they did these back in these older homes. There was actually a built-in cutting board, like a drawer that you could pull out, but it didn't have a knob on it. It was a pain in the neck to grab. So from Timu, I got a self-tapping knob, but it came in a pack of, it was a pack of six. Um, you'll see it in the picture here. But again, that worked out great. It is black. I do have the paint. I am going to paint it uh, brushed nickel so it matches all the rest on the drawers. But all right. So pretty much door pulls, drawer knobs, door knobs, drawer knobs. <laughs> well, yeah, you can get door knobs, but I don't need those. All right. Look at this. This is weird. This is just a recycle sticker. Um, I have two bins in my kitchen. I have the regular trash bin, which is metal. And then I have this red bin where I put all my recycle. And unfortunately my guests weren't paying attention and everything was going in the silver. So I got this cute little recycle label. Now it was a little confusing when I got it because you have to peel it off the backing and the word recycle kind of hangs loose. So it was a little tricky to get it onto the, um, the top of the recycle bin. But it's on there. And the same thing with the little arrows that go around. Those are all individual arrows that you have to stick on. But you can get inventive. You can put it whatever you way. But it looks great. I happen to have a red bin. The recycle word is in green. Eh. I don't care. It works. I'm not having to sort the trash in my house anymore. All right. Salt and pepper shakers. You've heard me talk about the colors in my kitchen. You know I couldn't pass these up. They have these. I got them in this red but they do have them in other colors. They have them, I've seen them in white, black, like a teal kind of color or a bluish kind of color. They don't know what other colors they have, but I absolutely love the shape of these. They hold a lot and they're just nice to look at. You know, they're not, I don't know, they're not just plain, clear, icky, never looks clean. I mean, this is, it's not dressy, but it's stylish. We're going to call them stylish, right? Okay. Ah, window film. Yes, it's in my kitchen. I put in a new insulated door that goes from my kitchen to my garage. So this is something I go in and out of all the time, going in and out to get to my freezer, to my car, to do laundry. I'm constantly either walking by or through that door. And it was a glass top panel to let some light in and a solid bottom. 
I didn't like looking through and into the garage and seeing what was in the garage. Um, so I got this wonderful window film. They have many patterns of this, but this is the one that I chose. It was so easy to put on. I just had to clean the glass, wipe it down really good to make sure all the corners and crevices, everything was clean, lightly mist it with a spray bottle of water and lay the film on top of it. And then I just took my dough scraper, which it's like a little plastic dough cutter, and I just used that to smooth out any air bubbles that were in it. That's been up in my window now for a good six, seven months, maybe even longer. Still looks as good as when I put it up, and you can't tell until you get right on top of it that it's a window film. But it's great. Still lets light through, and but it doesn't, nobody has to look out and actually see the garage. <laughs> and if I want to take it off, I can just peel it off. To get it off, all you have to do is spray the seams and the edges so the water gets behind it, and it will just lift right off. It's reusable. You can put it on any glass surface or even any metal surface if you have a smooth metal surface. Uh, like, say, the front of a dishwasher, you just don't like the coloring of it. You can put this on the front of a dishwasher. You can put it down the side of a refrigerator if you have an exposed side that doesn't look great. Anything along those lines that has a smooth surface um, you can put these on and they come in all different sizes all different patterns but it's a great thing in the kitchen so that when you're sitting in there you're working in there you're not looking out at the pile of laundry that i have to do out the window okay this table runner you just saw recently uh this happens to be my valentine day one and i do have this laying across my island um it's it works great I'm, i put it on already i'm going to leave it on until a couple of days after Valentine's Day. And then, excuse me, try not to sneeze. And then I will try to find um, on Timu a different runner that might be good for spring or something along those lines. Uh, just something that I can keep on on a regular basis, on an ongoing basis. So check out the table runners. They're a really decent price. This one is 72 inches long by about 12, 13 inches wide. So it's perfect. You can also get the table runners to put across like the top of a sideboard or shorter ones to put across your coffee table. <clears throat> but Timu has a huge selection. This particular one is in my kitchen. So it is part of my Timu kitchen. See? So we're thinking outside the box. But again, this is all stuff that's in my kitchen. The next thing is this huge calendar. When I found this, I was like, yes. It fits perfectly on the exposed side of my refrigerator. It's out of the way. People can come in and out of the kitchen and never really notice it because I've got it up with two-sided tape uh, and a couple of magnets on the side of the fridge. I also have a little pen holder up the top over above it that I just lay, matter of fact, this pen. I just lay this pen up there so when I can mark it. And it's great. It also comes with a bunch of stickers. So if there's special days that you want to put a sticker on like Valentine's Day, birthdays, anniversaries, um, you know, any type of like vacation is starting on this day or school starts on this day. If the kids want to use it, these are great. This is huge. I have enough room to write in those little boxes as to what I want. So to me, that's a bonus having that calendar there where I can see the whole year at one shot I because it has the months down and all the way across it's wonderful. And I will, I plan on getting one because it's a blank slate. You can get one for, yeah, every year. I love it. It's a great bargain. Okay. Handle covers. Now, the two that I have are red and I'm putting these up. They're long enough to go. I have a side by side. Uh, but even if you have a French door, they're long enough to go on your main handles, right? The primary handles. Or across, if you have the French doors on top and then the, the extra juice drawer, maybe the freezer drawer on the bottom. They're long enough to cover those entire ones. But what I did to make it go a little further is I cut each of them in half lengthwise. So it actually gave me two sets made out of the one set. But these are really nice. They're soft, almost like a velour. They do have the Velcro closing. And I will tell you on the older refrigerators like mine, they're going to be a little loose because it's a little wide, even for the Velcro. 
So if I wrap the Velcro tightly around it, it won't actually line up. Um, but I'm not worried about it. It's on there enough that even if it slides down, I just grab where it slid down. It does protect it. It does keep it clean. They work great. They wash great. Just remember to put the two Velcro pieces together so that they're attached before you throw them into the washing machine. Because if not, everything else will stick to the Velcro. But they work great. They're great little protectors um, to keep your, your handles clean. Okay, onward. Refrigerator liners. You can get these in sets. I got them, the first one that I got, I got one. And then I went and got a set of two. So I wanted to try it. You've heard me say many times, try before you buy. So I got one and I got this nice teal blue color. <laughs> I don't know why I keep wanting to sneeze. Um, but they work great. They don't slip around. You put the bubble side down and it does not slip around on the glass shells. It's the perfect width and depth for a side-by-side Standard side by side, not a French door side by side. They're the perfect size for that. If you do have a French door, you're probably going to need at least two of these, if not three of them, per shelf because your shelves go so far across. But they do work great. They come in a whole bunch of different colors. I chose this. I probably could have gone with the clear, but you know what? I didn't mind the blue. The blue is less expensive than the clear and Nobody sees it but me unless I open the refrigerator, right? And it is teal. I have teal all over my house, right? <laughs> Just not in my kitchen, but that's okay. But they do work great. So I did go back and I bought a two-pack so that I actually have three now to cover my three primary shelves. All right. Then we have a little refrigerator box. This little square box I showed you recently because i just gotten it and it works perfectly. I have these little tiny bottles of like maple syrup and these little um, tiny containers of like uh, the flavoring, like the Mio flavoring for beverages and things like that. And the little packets of crystal like that are like half open. I don't like to leave those sitting out. I just put them in the refrigerator. So little tiny things like that, uh, little individual creamer containers, little individual squares of those butter containers that you can get, like you get in restaurants. You know, if you have them in restaurants, you grab them, you bring them home. You throw them in this box. This box is working great. It fits perfectly with room to spare. So I highly recommend that. Then we also have, and oh, remember, all this stuff is from Timu. Then we also have the odor catcher. This does come in different colors too. They have it in the green, they have it in the burgundy color, they have it in a brown, I think they have it in a cream color. This is a charcoal activated um, odor catcher, so to speak. And again, it works great. I have my onion um, sitting on the shelf right next to this odor catcher. And when I open the refrigerator, you don't smell onion which is, to me, that's a big thing because that onion's been cut into. It's not whole. And even a whole on onion will have smell. But having a half-open onion and only having it wrapped up in a basic little plastic bag, not even in a Ziploc bag, I do not smell onion at all when I open that refrigerator. So that odor absorber, odor, that thing is working great. My refrigerator smells clean and fresh no matter what I put in. Even if I put food in there that I forgot to throw a quick cover on or whatever. It's good. You got to get one. All right. Next up, my little ice rub. Now you saw me haul this about a month or so ago. That little thing works great. I find that when I get like muscle spasms in my neck or aches in my neck, if I just take that and I just rub the ice on it whatsoever, it really helps a lot. When my knees are bothering me, I can just take that. And I love that, you know, the top is exposed, but the bottom has a grip where you can hold on to it. I'll put that, I'll rub that around my knee. It'll take out the swellings in my knee. It'll take out the swellings in my ankle. I could just sit with my legs crossed and rub it around my ankle instead of having like an ice pack balancing there. Or if I'm starting to get a migraine, I can use the, I use the ice pack, or the little ice roller behind the ear on the mandible back here behind your ear that's a pressure point 
for those of us who do get migraines, if you know, if you put pressure back here, right behind your ear, it slows, it impedes the flow of the blood to the head because this is where it's coming from. And by doing so, it reduces your migraine. So by icing that area, it slows it down and it works like a charm. I got to tell you. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, drawer divider. I got a couple of these and I had actually gotten them before I started doing these Timu videos. So you never actually saw them in any of my hauls, but these are great. They are adjustable. They have that rubber kind of thing on the end of them um, so that they actually hold securely between the back and the front of the door. They do expand quite a bit. So you have a choice depending on your drawer you can divide it front to back or side to side. I love them. It works out beautifully, especially in my big 36-inch uh, drawer that's in my island. It's just one big drawer, and I was able to divide that up uh, to put, like, all my food wraps and storage bags and that kind of things for food on one side, and all my washcloths and kitchen towels and uh, that kind of thing on the other side. Hold on. Oh, that foot's falling asleep again. It's always the same foot falling asleep, like the rest of me, right? My foot's yawning. So those dividers work great. I have another one in my big 30-inch drawer, one of my drawers that's under um, my coffee pot. And on one side, I keep all those little lids to like my 40-ounce mugs and that kind of stuff. And on the other side, I keep my food strainers. So it makes a nice divider. Um, and you can put as many as you want, depending on how big your drawer is. But for the price, they're really, really affordable. They work great. My shirt's big. <laughs> shirt's too big for me. When I did the video, I got to backtrack a little bit. When I did the video of that uh, utility cart, that long cart that I got, oh my word, I didn't even realize how bad those camera angles were. They made me look like I was 300 pounds. And I'm thinking... Oh my God. But you know what? I wasn't going to redo the video because those of you who have seen me, you know, I'm not that big. You can tell by looking at me. I'm, you know, you can see my collarbones. <laughs> I'm not a big person. I have a waistline, but man, that angle was really bad. So I'm going to be careful not to do that anymore. Right. And thank you for not judging and just commenting on the wagon and not commenting on, girl, you look huge. Because <laughs> I know some of you were thinking it, but I appreciate you not saying it. Okay, um, pa parchment paper, these discs, oh, I love these. I buy ground beef, ground turkey, ground sausage in bulk. When I say in bulk, being a single person, three to five pounds at a time or three to six pounds at a time. And then I make them into patties or rolls or whatever I'm going to do with them and how I'm going to shape them. And I put them in the freezer so that I have everything ready and just grab it. These little parchment paper discs, these are perfect for my hamburger press. I have um, one of those hamburger presses that I think it was probably either Tupperware or Rubbermaid, but you put a blob in and it comes with the press and you press it down. And then it has the, the next, it has the white plastic disc you put on top of that and then you add your next blob. So it separates with the white disc, right? Well, that's great because that gives it a solid surface to press. But by adding these parchment papers on the top of those discs, I can just easily, number one, keeping the disc clean and just being able to pull the burger off. And then I can use that paper to stack them and wrap them in either two packs or four packs or whatever the case may be. So these parchment papers are great. They, any kind of meat that you want to stack. And I also found when um, I'm doing like freezing like chicken legs or chicken wings or chicken parts, I can wrap one of these around at least one, if not two pieces of the chicken and then put it into the freezer bag and it keeps the pieces of chicken from like getting stuck to each other where you're having to bang them apart. So I think you don't want to bang apart from the freezer. You got to get these parchments. They work great. All right. Vacuum seal bags. Now you can tell I'm not going in any order. But basically what I did is I worked my way around one side of my kitchen and I started coming across to the island and then I zigzagged over to the stove. <laughs> so it's just like kind of going around a little bit. But these vacuum seal bags, and I will show you what they go with. I got this roll. You can't beat the price. 
right? These are great. And I'll tell you two reasons why I love them. Number one, they're versatile. You can put liquids, solids, semi-solids, anything you want in there. If you have leftover soup, put it in. You got leftover uh, pizza that you don't want to put in one of those little triangular storage things, put it in there. You got leftover like sausage links or sauteed uh, vegetables or whatever the case, whatever. It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold. It can be, as long as you let it cool a little bit, obviously, before you put it in the bag. But anything that you've cooked, anything that is raw, anything that is frozen, you can put it in these bags. That's the number one thing because it's the versatile. Number two is because of their size, you can actually cut them. So what I do is I'll put how much food I want into one of these bags and I'll see where it comes up and then I'll leave about an inch and a half above the top of it and then I cut it off. So a lot of these bags I would just cut in half. Then I'll put it into the vacuum sealer and depending on what it is, if it's liquid, I won't do vacuum. I'll just do seal because if it's liquid and you try to vacuum, you're going to be sucking your liquid out and into the machine. Trust me, these machines work great. But if it's like frozen or it's not liquidy, I'll do the vacuum seal and it'll be that size. It won't be extra wasted packaging. Then you take what you cut off, you quick seal one end of it to make a pocket, then you fill it and then you seal the other end. You see how that works? So you're actually getting two, I don't know, sealing bags out of one, depending, because I'm a single person. So if I put one pork chop or uh, two pork chops into a bag, that's fine. I don't need to put five or six pork chops and fill this whole bag. So that works great if you're either not freezing a lot or not sealing a lot. And I will tell you that I don't use these for regular leftovers because to me, that's a waste of a bag. If it's something I know I'm going to eat in the next couple of days and I'm not going to freeze, I don't put it in these bags. I save these bags for what I'm going to freeze or what I need to seal. Like if I want to seal flour, because flour does go bad after like maybe even six months or seven months, flour goes bad and you have to have it in a sealed container or in the freezer to give it that extra life. I will seal flour in these bags and then I'll just mark the date that I sealed them. Right? So they work good. Uh, oh, my dishcloths. I love these. I think. I'm not sure if I don't remember, but I think when I did the 1,000 subscriber giveaway box, and Candice, you can attest to this or not, um, I think I included a pack of these amazing dishcloths. Super soft, just the right size, very absorbent, but yet they don't get soggy, if you know what I mean. Um, you really have to wet, wet them for them to hold a lot of water but they work great. They're great on everything. They're great on countertops. They're great on dishes that you don't have to scrub. They're great on your face because they're like really super, I mean, I can't say it enough, super, super soft. Um, nice pastel shades. You get a lot of them. I've gotten a couple packs for myself and I do believe that I had sent one out to um, the winner of our 1K subscriber box. And I may put more in the 5K subscriber box because we're almost at 2,500. So I got to get busy on that box. I got a lot in it, but I got to put more in it. So anyway, yes, they're great. Um, okay, pot protectors. Now these things, they look like little starbursts. You can get all different designs, but I chose this particular design simply because they're more, by having arms, they're a lot more flexible. Hold on a second. His Highness is having a fit about something. He just wanted some loving. He came and gave me kisses. He came, he, he kissed, he went. <laughs> he whines when he wants to give kisses. Now he's looking and thinking he can get up in my recliner, but he can if he wants to. It's all right. Anyway, back to the pot protectors. Because these things have arms on them, they tend to bend into different shapes, whether it's a deep dish they have to wrap around or a low flying pan, frying pan. They tend to flex a lot easier. So I love these. The set had three different sizes. It had what I call extra large for like my big jumbo deep, almost like a stewing frying pan kind of thing. And then the medium size and then the smaller size. 
one set was more than enough to do all the pots and pans that I had um, to protect the silver stone, protect the linings, you know, from getting scratched. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it just, it makes it easier, you know, to keep them clean and to stack them, you know, nest them together, so to speak. Absolutely love it. So if you don't have anything like this, you might want to consider getting some because they really do work good. Even if you have cast iron pans, which I have a lot of antique cast iron pans that are about 100 years old. They were my grandmother's who got them from her mother. So these are from like the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, I do have to scour them and reseason them because they've been in storage and packed for so long. But I will put these liners, I'll get more and I'll put these liners between them. You know, they say put paper towels between them when you when you nest them. If you're going to nest them, you should never nest, just so you know, cast iron pans. They should always be hung. But for lack of space, which I don't have, <laughs> they have to be nested. So I'll put these liners in between them to protect them once I get them seasoned. All right. Um, we already covered the drawer knobs, the brushed nickel and the black. Oh, my sponges. Okay, so these are one of the first kitchen items that I ever purchased. Um, these wonderful little yellow sponges with the scouring on the back, I think I got a 10-pack of them. They do come in different size packs. These are great. These hold up a long time. And guess what? If I have one that gets kind of grody because maybe I've been scouring a greasy pan or something that has butter in it or whatever, and you know how they get, they get ick, right? Put it in the dishwasher. A lot of people don't think about that. Put your sponge in the dishwasher and put it in, oh, I have a three rack, so I put it in the middle rack where the glasses are. And it, oddly enough, it doesn't fly around inside the dishwasher. But if you think it's going to, you can just lay like a ladle or a spatula or something lightly across it just to kind of weight it down a little bit. And I always turn the grody side down so that when the spray comes up, that's what it's going to hit and the upper spray. So, yeah. Works great, lasts a long time. It was one of my first purchases probably more than a year ago when I started shopping at Timu, and I still have not gone through that entire 10-pack yet in a year. That's how long these last. I think I probably have at least five, if not six, left. So they hold up great. Right? I do use them just in the kitchen. Oh, excuse me, and in the bathroom. I have one for the bathroom sink, but mostly it's to the kitchen and the bathroom. You can't pass up on that bargain. Now, I think it was my two hauls ago. I think it was two hauls ago. You saw me um, get a dispenser for trash bags. But I had mentioned these. This roll of AKA Handy Wipes wannabe. Same type of cloth, same idea, but it comes in a roll. I love these. They work just like the name brand. They're just as good. They are reusable. They are washable. I have put some of them through the washing machine just to see how they would launder. They didn't fall apart. They held up really, really good. So I was very happy with this. I use these for, um, instead of wasting paper towels, I actually use these for like if I have to clean up a mess on the floor or if I spill something spaghetti sauce or sauce wise or whatever i will use these because they're very absorbent they're soft they pick up good rinse out easy washable reuse right they're a thinner version of a kitchen washcloth um, but they're great it saves on having to use a lot of paper towels so this roll is a bonus that it comes that way as opposed to just getting a thin pack with like five in it you got to get the roll seriously Great for out in the garage, too, when you're doing stuff and you need to have a wipe or keep it in the car. Love those. Now, I got this. This is a heavy-duty drain snake. If you're anything like me, you probably or possibly do have a insincorator, which is like a f food... Chopper, food, what? It's the word I'm looking for. Garbage disposal, for lack of a better word. My garbage disposal sits, as it should, on the side of the sink. 
because I have two drains closest to the dishwasher. That's where your garbage disposal should be. If you have a dishwasher, your garbage disposal needs to be on that side. So anything that comes off your dishes goes through the garbage disposal and then gets liquefied and washed away. You don't ever want to have your sink, just your dishwasher, just tied up directly to your sink and have your garbage disposal under only your sink drain. That being said, at times I forget to put the little strainer. I have a, a, a mesh metal strainer, which I'll also put a picture of that up here for you. I forget to put it in there to catch food that might come off whatever dishes that I do wash by hand. So stuff gets down in the drain. My plumber, as opposed to me hiring them and spending money, referred me to get this kind of a drain snake. And it does work good. My kitchen drain was getting a little slow. I just hooked this into the end of my, my um, battery-operated drill, gently pushed it down and through, and I got to tell you, it, I now have a whirlpool in my sink. What a difference it makes. And this is long enough to thoroughly get through your drain, through the trap, and down to where your main drain is. That's typically the area that gets clogged right, is the area to the main drain. Not that big four-inch main drain itself. That's usually pretty open. It takes a lot to clog that. If that gets clogged, you got to call a plumber. So because this is big enough, this is what works well for a kitchen drain or even a bathroom, you know, a, like a tub type drain. Yes, you can get the plastic ones. Timo has them for probably under a dollar, those mm -hmm. little orange plastic ones. They're only good for short, superficial plugs not for really getting down into it and if they break off in your drain which they do because they're only plastic you start manipulating and pushing they will snap then you really have to get a plumber in because now you got to get that out of your drain as well as whatever's clogging your drain so this is the way to go this is what i recommend i have used it my plumber recommended it and uh, down here, and I am going to give them a shout out, it's Parker, Parker and Sons. They are amazing. They cover the entire house. They do everything from insulating to solar to plumbing to electric to HVAC. You name it, they do it. I love them. And I love them even more because they helped me save money. And they weren't looking for my money. They're like, here, you can do this yourself. What can you do that? Right? <laughs> so they save me money like Timu saves me money. So get the metal snake. All right? All right. Now, these other sponges, look at these gray ones. These are a little bit more heavy duty than the yellow ones. The yellow ones are for regular dish washing or whatever. These gray ones, I've used these to clean um, my hubcaps. Well, not my hubcaps, my wheels. All right? I've used them to clean in my car to the tough stuff like on my my uh bumpers so to speak when stuff gets stuck on them i'll use these ones to get it off if there's something i really need to scour out of a pan heavy duty scour that's soaking and or boiling won't get something out of a pan i use these these are the butt kickers of sponges it's the only way i can call it right they're not just general everyday use sponges. these are your heavy duty sponges uh, fortunately, I don't have a lot of use for them, so I'm still on the first one, but I really put it to the test and it's working great. So they come in different quantities. I think what I got was a five pack. I think if I remember correctly, but I know they come in different quantities. All right, here we go. We're not, eh, we're about halfway through this first page that has 49 items on it. Okay, next. Oh, yes. These little brown scouring pads. Now, I chose to get these very flat ones that you'll see in the pictures, but they do have the wider, thicker ones. These are perfect when you get baked on food stains. If you have like a cooktop and you get that, you see that residue that's on there that no, you can't scrape it off and a regular scouring pad won't take it off. These will. These brought my cooktop back to looking like new. All right, and my cooktop is probably 40 years old. It works great, but it looked terrible. Now it looks like new. And this does not scratch the surface. There's no little hairline scratches on my cooktop. It's 
shiny and smooth, but all that residue is gone. I also had a couple of pans. You know how we all have our favorite cooking pans? I also had a couple of pans that had that weird, orangey, greasy, forever built up on the bottom of it. God only knows where it comes from. I took that scouring pad to it and just a little bit of dish soap, and it just brought those things right back to shine. It took all that crap off the bottom of them. So I am in love with these. I did get the little thin ones, and the reason I got the thin ones is so that I can fold them to get into little cracks and crevices around things and handle them better. Some of you might want to get the thicker ones that are sponge-like so you have something softer in your hand to hold on to. I wasn't worried about that. No big deal, right? But they work. They really work. I'm so thrilled with how they almost 200 items. Actually, I think it's a little over 200 items total that'll be in these videos. Everything works. And better than expected. And cheaper than expected because Timu is not expensive. Now, I got this, this little tiny mini dustpan set. I'm always finding, and I don't know why, little messes. Just, you know, mom and I will be sitting doing something. There'll be a little mess on top of the, the uh, tabletop or the counter. And as a, instead of me just pulling out a paper towel, I just grab this little mini set and I just sweep it into there and throw it into the trash. And then I can just use the regular and just wipe down the tablecloth and not have to worry about my my cloth getting all crummy and whatnot. It's great for little messes. Um, I was sitting in the recliner, matter of fact, just yesterday morning, getting ready to take Sadie for her staples to be taken out of her head. And I went to get up and when I leaned forward, I had a bowl of Cheerios that I was eating. And when I leaned forward, a whole bunch of the Cheerios went on the floor. Now, the dogs were outside. Normally, they'll come over and they just vacuum that stuff right up, right? I don't have to worry about it. Nope, I just went and got that little this little mini sweep thing and swept it up. Mess was done. Dead dogs never even knew it was there. <laughs> so works great. It's really nice for, as I said, small areas, desktop, countertops. Um, I've actually taken my keyboard and I've hit it up across the keyboard just to sweep stuff out between the cracks, you know, left the laptop off and gotten a bunch of junk out that way too. Works good. Whatever you can think for use it for. You know, keep it in the car, keep it handy. This lint roller, uh, I think it was in my last video, you saw me haul the portable, the little mini pocket size lint roller. This big one is great. This is what I use weekly on my nice red sofa, my teal clam chair that's over there, my um, recliner that's over there. That's primarily what I use this on. It works wonderful. I can roll it until it's full of stuff, run it in the kitchen, run it cold water over it, washes everything away. What I do tend to do, though, is because it's hair, mostly dog hair that I'm picking up, I make sure that I rinse it off in the garbage disposal side of my sink so the hair does not clog the drain. Because, yes, a garbage disposal will chop hair to ribbons. Right, so it works good for this, and my drains don't get clogged in the meantime. So I just run the cold water over it. You don't even have to dry it off. You just shake it, and the water doesn't stick to it. Come back, roll some more, rinse, roll some more, rinse. So much better than the sticky ones you have to tear off. And You know, in this house, I could go through a big roll of those sticky wand-type ones that you peel and, and toss. I could do that in one day and not even get to the other furniture. I could do that just on the couch. <laughs> So if you have pets or if you have an exceptionally hairy person in your house that sheds everywhere, I know as I get older, my hair, I shed and I'll find it in places I don't even remember being. <laughs> so get yourself the lint roller, right? It's a good size one. Now, there's also a lint scraper here. This is a little handle thing. As you can see, it's just a little handle. And it almost looks like an oversized type of razor blade. But what I like about it is it's good as a crevice tool because I don't know about you, but well, my futon has creases in the back, creases where it folds, and then a crease in the seat. So that little scraper gets in there where the roller can't. And it has that little tip on the very end of it to get like around the buttons and things like that. If you want to, you know how lint builds up around if you have tufts on certain cushions and buttons? This works great. 
I have found it's not always one tool that you need to do the job in, especially in a house with pets. I need multiple tools to hit up different types of things because I have yet to find one tool that does it all. So, but these two, these are easy. They work, right? All right, next. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, this is also in my kitchen. Now, remember, these are things that are under my kitchen cabinet. So they're in my kitchen, okay? So that's why I'm considering them to be part of my team of kitchen. Also from under my kitchen cabinet is a rug scraper. And I have a runner. I have a eight foot, a two foot by eight foot long runner that goes uh, from my dishwasher to the end of that row of counters. And then another two by eight foot one that goes across from the stove over. So I have carpets, area rugs um, in my kitchen. And that's so that when I'm standing cooking or I'm standing cleaning or whatever the case may be, I'm not standing on that whole, that cold tile floor. These runners, as you can imagine, the dogs like to lay on them. They collect the dog hair. This little scraper thing, this is great. It is two-sided. It works great on any pile because one of the rugs is pretty much flat. It doesn't have too much of a pile to it. But my favorite rug is dimensional. And the designs of it are raised and elevated in certain spots to make it stand out in the, the design. But it still works great on that. And I can do that entire runner in about 10 minutes. And then the other runner takes me five or so because it's less. It works good because the vacuum can't get out the dog hair that's stuck in the weave of the rug. And this gets it out. This gets things out of that weave. What can I say? It works. Don't try it on upholstery. It will rip your upholstery apart. I tried it on the couch. Fortunately, I tried it on, on a side end and it caught and it left a thread. So I cut that off quick and I said, nope, okay, can't use it on that. Strictly for rugs. Don't ruin your upholstery on it. And I've got corduroy in my recliner. Mm -mm -mm, that's even worse. It'll catch it and tear it. Threads, no, you don't want to do that. Okay, we're going to move on now, right? This is also under my sink. This is, they call this a shoe scrubber, but I use this sometimes um, on anything I need to scrub. If I get a stain on a shirt when I'm out and I want to pre-treat it before I wash it and not let it sit, I use this and I've used it many times, unfortunately, because I will spill coffee. On myself. I'll have coffee in my car and I'll hit a bump or something. And the, even though this, the cup is covered, something always manages to get on me. Or I didn't put the lid on tight. Something manages, or I didn't close the lid. You know how it goes, right? So they say you can use this on shoes, which I have no doubt you can, but I love this because you fill the well with soap and then you put the little plug back in. All right. And as you're scrubbing, you, you dip the brush in water. As you're scrubbing, you just push on the, where that little well is. You push on the knob and it dispenses the soap. Great for sneakers. If you have not canvas sneakers, vinyl sneakers, leather sneakers, whatever the case may be. Great for sneakers. Great for loafers. I have a lot of what they call dockers, which is like a canvas boat shoe. Um, it also works really good on the straps. If you have wider cloth straps on your flip flaps, flip flops, and you don't want to put your flip flops in a washer, this will scrub them up nicely. But again, I use it on clothing stains or I use it on little stains on the rug. You know, if one of the dog gets sick, which it happens, you know, they're getting older, they both have GERD, so God only knows when it's going to happen. I'll clean it up, but then I want to scrub it. This is perfect. I get it wet, it dispenses the soap, I scrub that area, dry it off with one of my Handy wipe roll towels. It works for everything. Spot cleaning on a pillow, spot cleaning on a sofa, spot cleaning anything, right? Great little gadget to have in your kitchen under your sink or in your bathroom under your sink. Okay, but either way, right? Mine's in my kitchen. All right, the next thing that's coming out from under my, you can tell I'm doing under the sink stuff right now, right? But it's in my kitchen. Let's not get caught up with semantics, okay? This squeegee works wonderfully. I use it on my sliding door that goes from the kitchen out to my lanai. As you can imagine, my dogs are always either putting their paws in the door or putting their noses on the doors, and it gets crazy. 
works wonderful, works easy. I have also used it on my car. I have sprayed my windows with Windex and used the squeegee and just went ch -ch -ch. Great. I did use it on the outside of my big living room window uh, right before Christmas time when I put up that big banner for Christmas in the window. I wanted to make sure the window was clean, so I sprayed it first with water, squeegeed it down, then did it with the Windex, squeegeed it down. No streaks, no water spots with a squeegee, right? So different colors it comes in, different sizes, different handles, but this is the particular one that I chose and I'm very happy with it. It works wonderfully. More? Okay, yeah, I'm checking my list. We're getting down there. We got about this much more to go. <laughs> And we're already at 50 minutes. That's why I said one page per video, right? Okay. The mini plunger. Gosh, this thing is a life saver. Before I used the snake, when my um, bathtub started like filling up and not draining property, I grabbed the mini plunger that I typically would use in the sink. But I figured, well, I don't need a big plunger for the bathtub. So I just hit that bathtub up with that three or four times. And, you know, you get that sound that <laughs> as you're going up and down with it, it makes that weird suction sound. Turn on the water. Yeah, a little better. Not perfect. Then I broke out the snake, went down in there and cleared everything out with the snake. And it ran clear. It's wonderful. I also have used it in the sink. Um, again, that's how I found out that food was getting down there that I forgot to put the catch strainer in. Um, but I used it in the sink and again, it's perfect. It's not big and cumbersome. It works great. It's very sturdy. Between that and the snake, there hasn't been any clogs that I haven't been able to handle. And since I've used them, I haven't had any clogs to have to use them. So there you go, right? Spray bottle. This big heavy duty spray bottle, this thing right here. I think I got it last fall um, in one of the videos I did out on the lanai. I remember doing it out on the lanai in the household. I think it was one of the ones that had like 30 some odd or 60 some odd items in that order. This spray bottle right now has ant spray in it because as you can imagine down here in the spring, we get them little tiny red ants and they're not necessarily fire ants, but they try to get in the house. So I have to spray all along the front of the porch all around the front door, around the back of the doors to come into the lanai. I have to spray that whole area. This is a heavy-duty bottle. It holds a lot. I don't have to keep refilling it. It's wonderful. Um, but you can put anything you want in it. I wanted to get a second one because I like the shape of it, and it stores a lot easier than the big, weird-shaped, oblong box uh, bottles of, like, Windex or booby gone or whatever the case may be it just stores better being round i can get more of them tucked away on my little shelf so heavy duty spray bottle use it for whatever you need to use it for you can use it for misting your plants right whatever figure it out think outside the box more we got just a few more well this will be about an hour all right all these reusable lids now the first set I got here is the yellow. And then I went later when I realized how much these really worked, how much I love them, but they have a lot of similar size bowls and things and plates that don't have lids. I went and got a second set. And when I got the second set, the clear ones were on a lightning deal. So I grabbed up the clear. So and I have two sets. These work wonderful. They're Four or five, I can't remember which, I think it's five, maybe even six, different sizes per set. Um, I'll put a notation up here as to how many is in the set. They work great. I love that they have the little tabs all the way around the edge so that you can grab them and pull them down nice and tight and snug and use the tabs to pull them off, get them off the container easy. They hold so snugly that I have actually been able to stack bowls on top of each other on these lids because they the lids are rubber so to speak rubberized they grab and they hold i put another one on top of that lid and yes it bows a little bit but it doesn't come off and i stacked i think i have three of them at one point stacked 
together. Um, and they all, they stayed and it was fine and it was wonderful. And I didn't have to spread them out, take a lot of space up. It just, yeah, <laughs> they work good. Um, they have a small one that'll fit like over the top of a can or a cup, coffee cup. Um, they have the medium size ones, anything from soup bowl size. And the biggest one fit my big mixing bowl. So they will stretch. They do have what looks like a seam to them, but they have a lot of stretch in them. Try them. Try one set. They come in a whole bunch of different colors. You'll like them. My doggy towel. Do you remember when I got this? I think I got this, I think it was just before Christmas, maybe in November. Every move you make, you know, everything you bake or whatever it says on there, I can't remember. I'll be watching you. That's my dogs. <laughs> I was hoping that it was a set of two. It did say it was a set. However, I only got one. The print is on two ends of the towel so that when you fold it and you hang it over the, um, I hang mine over the handle to the dishwasher. So when I hang it on that bar, you get to see this, but it just, it's so appropriate for my house. And it's a great towel. I have not used it to dry anything other than my hands. When I'd washed my hands and it was hanging there, I, it was handy and I did use it. It's white. I try not to use it too much. And just got it really for decor, but it's the most adorable thing. And it sells out quickly. So if you see it and you get it in your cart, don't expect it to be there if you leave these things in your cart sit for two or three days, because this keeps going in and out of stock. Okay. Um, all right. The pill cutter and the pill crusher. I got this thanks to, I knew that Sadie had surgery coming up. So I got this prior to her surgery. It's great. I love this because on the top, when you open the top, it's the pill cutter and it'll break the, the pill. It'll have a pretty good one. She was on like what I call a horse, horse pills, the big ones. It will cut those very nicely. But when you unscrew the bottom, there's a well in the bottom. You can put the pill, whether you cut it first or don't cut it, put the pill, make sure you screw it back on tight. And as you're screwing it on, you twist back and forth and it crushes that pill. It pulverizes them into a fine dust and it was great because I could just sprinkle it on her food and she took her medication that way um one of her pills I had to put in in cheese and in, in uh, cream cheese because even crushing it it was nasty and she wouldn't take it but it'll crush any pill if you have a hard time swallowing pills this is great crush your pills put them in applesauce pudding whatever you put them in and get them this way but I love that it's both in one tiny little thing. You can crack the pill, make it smaller if it's too big, or you can crush it and yeah, take it that way, right? Works great. Highly recommend this. Oh, this is a two-parter. This was a set um, and it came as a set. And when I bought it, I didn't even realize it was a set. I have a beautiful red stand mixer and as you can imagine it's not that deep wine red it's red fire engine red it was always sitting out and i just had a towel thrown across the top of it to try to keep dust out of the bowl and whatnot so finally on timu i found the cover for the stand mixer hold on you don't need to see my almost sneeze face that's the third one in just this video um so i got the cover now I have the smaller stand mixer. These covers are for the big full size stand mixer, but that was no problem because all I did was take the bottom. This thing is like quilted and I just tucked the bottom up so that it brought it down to the right height. And then I just put a little hot glue around the inside, a little, um, yeah, hot glue with a glue gun on the inside to hold that curl. The outside, you can wipe it down clean. It's really nice and quilted. It has two pockets on the one side. So you can keep like a recipe card in there or instructions or whatever booklets you want to keep in it. And then it came with this little bag. And the bag is perfect because I have three different attachments uh, right now. I may get more down the road, but right now I just have the three basic attachments. It holds all three. 
zippers them up nicely. I take this little bag and I actually put it in the bowl. My mixer has the stainless steel bowl that locks into place. These fit all three of them in the bowl, in the bag, in the bowl. That way they're all right there where I need them. It does not scratch the bowl. They don't get dusty and then everything is under the big cover. So if you have a stand mixer, don't worry about the size of what you're getting. These covers will fit the larger ones and our mine is, it's not a mini, but it's a small, it's like one step down. It was, as opposed to being like a $500 mixer, it was like a $300 mixer, <laughs> but it was red, you know, and it was all I need. I didn't need a big fancy schmancy. Yeah. So get those covers. They work great. And Timu does have the attachments, but I haven't gotten any of my attachments from Timu yet. So far, the three I have actually came with the mixer. Now, my favorite little lady in the kitchen next to me and Sadie is Angry Mama. I got mine with yellow body, uh, brownish red or auburn hair. Angry Mama is great. If you don't have one and you have a microwave, you need to get an Angry Mama. You fill up to a certain amount with water, and then you add a certain amount of white vinegar. Um, and then you put it in the microwave for three minutes. And over the course of that three minutes, what it does is the water and the vinegar obviously make the steam, and it just like fills the microwave and loosens everything off that's stuck. And if you've ever had things explode or spray in the microwave, you know it gets on the glass door, it gets on the top, the back, all over the place. You got to put her on the tray. Don't take out the glass table, but put her in there for three minutes. She'll steam. You won't see it. And if you open the door, it defeats the purpose. So just put her in for three minutes, let her do her thing, take her out, and then grab your regular kitchen cloth and everything just wipes out. Seriously, no scrubbing, no scouring. You don't have to worry about, do you have enough soap? Do you have enough lather to get it off? Everything just wipes down. So. That angry mama, she was the best investment I ever made for my microwave. I also have a magnetic splatter shield. This splatter shield is wonderful because just as you see in the picture here, it pops up into the center and the magnets hold it. The magnets are wrapped. Um, they're, when you look at this on the top, you can see those little black slats. The magnets are under that, but the magnets are also wrapped in a, what I call a non-arcing type of foil so that you won't get sparks coming out of it. I know a lot of people have said to me, that, why did I get that? It's going to spark like crazy. It doesn't spark at all. The magnets are not exposed, nor is the, the foil that they're wrapped in. And those little black caps do pop off. So you can take those off, take the magnets out, take the lid and throw it in the dishwasher. Right? But that catches things that tend to explode or pop upwards, and it does work. The only difference is because it's suspended and doesn't come over the, the you know, enclose the entire dish, it doesn't prevent the spatters from coming out along the sides. And that's what I use the Angry Mama for, to clean up those particular spatters. But it does work. It's easy to put up. It's easy to take down. It's easy to take apart to clean it. And it's easy to put it back together again. It is BPA free. Obviously, it's microwave safe and it's dishwasher safe. Win win, right? Okay. The microwave dish cover that I got. Now, this says an eight inch dish. Keep in mind, your luncheon plates, your sandwich plates are eight inch dishes, not your dinner plates. Dinner plates are anywhere from 10 to 12 inches. Okay, in diameter. So what I got, I got the smaller one for the eight inch dish. It works good if I'm heating up, I want to warm up a sandwich or just a couple pieces of chicken or something that I want to warm up. When you put that lid over the plate, that cuts your time down because it's making like this little mini oven inside the microwave oven. And it's keeping all the heat and everything right. So if I want to say, if I want to take frozen sausage and put it in the microwave to thaw it, instead of having to put it in the microwave for three minutes, I put the cover on it and I only have to put it in for one. 
So it makes it more energy efficient, especially for thawing things out. And it gives that little extra splatter protection as well because it's completely over the dish. And that little rubber rise or silicone ring around the bottom of it keeps it down. Now, will it pop up? Yes. I made the mistake of putting it directly over a bowl of soup that I was warming. Actually, it was clam chowder, so it was thicker. And it was suspended on the top of the bowl. It wasn't the bowl, in other words, was higher than the depth of the cover. And when that thing got to boiling, all of a sudden I hear boom, and it flew up, hit the top piece that was magnetized, knocked the top piece down on top of it, and then the whole thing was covering the bowl. I still only had minimal mess to clean up. Um, but yeah, it taught me not to put it over anything that it can't completely cover. <laughs> so it does work. All right, couple more things. Um, my paper towel holder. Now, all my hardware in my kitchen is brushed nickel. When I redid my kitchen, the first thing I started with was the dishwasher, and that had a brushed nickel bar on the outside of it. Then I replaced the stainless steel sink. I put in double sink and I put a gooseneck, a really tall brushed nickel faucet with a brushed nickel soap dispenser. And then as you saw in the very beginning of this video, all my hardware that I put on my cabinets is brushed nickel. My chandelier is brushed nickel. The chain to my chandelier is brushed nickel. So I got this brushed nickel paper towel holder. You can mount this in a whole bunch of different ways. You can mount it to the side of something. You can mount it up, which in my case, that's what I did. I mounted it up under the cabinet that's over my kitchen sink. So it's out of the way, but it's like right there and handy for me. You can also get these uh, paper towel holders that sit on the counter, but I wanted one that was... So instead of choosing to, to mount it against the side of something, I mounted it up. Uh, and it's nice to have that option. It was easy. Two screws, it was up and done. And it works perfectly. Solid. It's been up there now for months. Doesn't matter how much I pull on that roll, it ain't going anywhere. Love it. All right, a couple more things. My triangle paper, my paper, my triangle towel holder. You've seen these all over Timo. These are the cutest little things and they come in all different colors. Oddly enough, they didn't have one in red. So I had to get white and gray uh, because that was the next best thing for my kitchen. I did want red or black and they didn't have them, but this is great. I'll use one of those really soft dish cloths that I talked about in the beginning that I showed you. And after I'm done rinsing it out, I squeeze it out because it doesn't stay soggy. I squeeze it out. I just take the end and I push it in the hole and that's it. It's hanging there. It air dries. No, it's not laying against the wall because the depth of that little holder comes out far enough that it's actually holding the towel out a little bit and it's not touching the wall. My wall never gets wet. You're not going to want to put a sopping wet cloth up there because then you'll have water dripping down. You will have a problem. If you squeeze, the, you know, you rinse it out, you squeeze the water out. Instead of laying it across your faucet or puddling it up on your sink or even hanging it under the sink, which is a big mistake because that can raise mold. Heads up, people. Never hang or place a wet sponge or a wet towel on a rack under your kitchen cabinet. You're creating an environment for mold and germs, and it's not good. Yeah. Take it from somebody who just remodeled her entire kitchen. I had to get rid of all that stuff from the previous occupants. So this holds great. It works wonderful. It just goes up with two-sided tape, but it stays up. This is really good. Works like a charm. I do have a couple of them. Actually, I put, got two more and I put them in my shower. So there's one at one end of my shower. In case I have a guest, they can tuck their towel in it, their hand, their face cloth. And I have one at the other end of the shower where I keep my personal things. And I can stick my cloth in there, squeeze it out hang it up to dry. <clears throat> they dry quicker when they're up in the air and they're not all crumbled, right? Then you can put it in your laundry basket. You don't want to put it in there wet and you can put it in. Okay. Really? <laughs> they do. They work great. Hold on. I need another drink. Sadie's laying there looking at me. I got to show you my puppy. 
There's the girl. She's still in her cone of shame. She did have her staples out yesterday. Oh, well, she had her, I don't know what today is, but I'm posting this. She had her staples out on Friday the 26th. And she has, because it's taken over 20 days, it's taken actually three weeks for that incision on the top of her head to close. First it was sutures, and then it got infected, and then it had to be cleaned out and recut, and blah, 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 and then the staples. So the staples were in for 13 days. Um, she does have a raw spot. It is healed, but on top, she has a raw spot. Like, you know, if you skin your knee, you have that raw spot of, like, red, fleshy skin showing. She's got that. So to keep her from scratching it, she has to keep the cone on through the weekend, and then I'll evaluate it on Monday. And if I see it's not so raw and red and it's starting to heal better, I'll take the cone off while I can watch her to make sure she doesn't scratch it and get it open again. But she hasn't been trying to scratch lately, so I don't think it's itching her as much as it was. But she got a couple more days. She's been a trooper. She's been since this all started on January 2nd. So this is the better part of the month she's been dealing with these all right, the last thing in this video, because we just hit an hour and 10 minutes, holy crap, um, is the nail brush. And you've seen me haul these before. This little nail brush is perfect. I do keep it in the kitchen because when I'm handling food, like if I'm making meatballs or if I'm handling raw chicken or whatever the case, when I put the soap on my hands, I grab that nail brush off the hook and I make sure I scrub my hands really good as opposed to just washing them like this. Sometimes you just need that extra. And normally, you know, I have long nails, but I've been doing stuff again. So the nails are off again. Um, but normally you want to make sure you get under there. So I keep that in my kitchen and that's something I use all day long. So that's your first 49, 50 items. We still have over 150 more items to cover. So there's going to be at least two, if not three more videos. Because um, I have two full pages and another half page or three quarters of a page because I started looking in my pantry. So as I said, all these things are in my kitchen. These are all from Timu. They are all tried and true. Everything you've seen in this video, I do believe everything is pretty much available. If it's not available, I'll put a notation down below where the other links are basically saying it's sold out or discontinued, whatever the case may be. Um, but I'll try to find a link for another similar option if it's something that you want. So yeah, more to come. Thanks for watching this. I really appreciate it. Please be sure you give a big thumbs up. Thumbs up helps my channel. YouTube will get my channel out there for more people to see, the more people that like it. So if you haven't already given a thumbs up at the beginning of this video, please give one now. Make sure you share this. Start letting everybody know just how much stuff you can get from Timu. And wait till you see what's coming in the next My Timu Kitchen series, right? Guys, I really appreciate you being here. Make sure if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, you can remedy that. There's a button down there. Yeah, it says subscribe. Got a little, but, but yeah, see, right, right. No, not this one here, the one down there. Not the one in the picture. <laughs> you can remedy that, right? Okay, it's not a lifetime commitment, but you know what? It'll keep you from missing anything else that I post. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, stay hydrated. Above all else, please stay sweet. And I will catch you soon with more Timu.